Hey y'all, uh, welcome back to Neon's Movie Reviews. I'm Neon, this is my review channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about 2013's Joe. But before I dive into that, I do just want to say if you enjoyed my content, please give this video a like, it really helps out my channel. And uh, we are a couple weeks into the summer of Nick Cage, we're finally nearing the end of the summer of Nick Cage. So uh, yeah, if you want to get notified of more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. And then uh, if you actually want to get a notification, hit the bell in the corner. But um, Joe, uh, this is this is a David Gordon Green film, and um, for some reason I misunderstood what this film was. I lobbed it in with some of his other films, and just was just like, eh, I'll get around to it. Um, I was very mistaken on that. So before I dive into this film, I really want to talk about the director, David Gordon Green, and kind of why or where my head was at when, when I initially heard about this film. So I'm just going to go through his filmography. So started off with uh, this film called George Washington in 2000, followed that up with All the Real Girls, 2003, both very I've not seen them, but I've heard they're both very good, but very hard-hitting dramas. Uh, then you got Undertow in 2004, which, having seen Joe, this was probably the closest film to Joe. Uh, then you got Snow Angels, which is how I knew about him. Um, I will definitely be talking about that film in the future, but uh, it's a hard film to watch. It's really good, though. Uh, one of Sam Rockwell's best films. Um, you got Pineapple Express comes out with that. So you got four really hard hitting dramatic films. And then he does Pineapple Express in 2008. Follows that up with Your Highness and The Sitter, both in 2011. And then the next year, he does Prince Avalanche, which I've not gone around to seeing yet, but from my understanding, it's basically clerks with road construction workers instead. Um, that's pretty much my understanding of what that is. Uh, and then that same year again, 2013, does Joe. And then after that, he does this film called Manglehorn, which I just learned about. Some kind of one-man show Al Pacino drama. It's supposed to be really good. Uh, then he does Our Brand is Crisis, which another one, never heard. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton, Sandra Bullock, political drama. Um, they just stronger, which that's really good film. Just uh, and uh, then you get his next branch, Halloween, followed by Halloween Kills coming coming out next year, and then Halloween ends the year after that. That's his filmography. So I mistakenly saw Pineapple Express, Your Highness, The Sitter, Prince Avalanche, and then Joe. And just assumed, oh, that's that was your comedy phase. Um, probably should mention, he also is heavily involved in Vice Principals, uh, Red Oaks, and East Bend and Down. Um, so he, he does a lot of comedy work, but I just, for whatever reason, lobbed this in with his comedy works and just thought that's all it was going to be. So when I got around to watching Joe, I had in my mind this is going to be... Seth Rogen, James Franco style comedy, just starring Nick Cage and Ty Sheridan. I was very mistaken. Um, this is an exceptionally powerful drama, and I feel m m what I went into this film expecting and what I ended up getting out of it is going to probably relate to why I'm rating this film the way I do. But for me, this is a fucking 10 out of 10. Uh, I felt the same way about Snow Angels as well. Um, really, fan really fantastic film. Um, basic plot, though. Uh, Nick Cage, he plays Joe. Joe runs this kind of... Sh well, it, it, it's a shady business. Uh, basically, he's contracted by the, tr the tree loggers to go into living forests with his crew and poison living trees so that way those trees will die the loggers can come in tear those trees down put the new trees in everybody keeps the business coming in so 
he does that he runs with some they're all good they're all nice people but they're not the most upstanding citizens um and uh in in the process he meets uh gary played by ty sheridan now gary's 15 years old he's homeless uh but he's a hard worker meets nick cage asks him for work um proves himself really well and then uh nick or uh, joe drops him back off and sees that his father is this horrible abusive drunk just beating this kid and um you can see that joe's got a lot of built up aggression that he is constantly just seething just just always just knuckles clenched just just he's ready to explode and he's doing everything in his power not to he's avoiding situations that he knows he'll get too invested in and so he's kind of given he's trying to keep his distance from this kid things happen in his life gets their paths to cross again gets their plas- paths to cross again start getting closer and closer and now we can't and that's really the setup it's it's this relationship between joe as the surrogate father for this kid gary and then gary's actual father who's a horrible abusive drunk murdering bastard um this is not a film you're gonna laugh much in there's some things that you're gonna see that are going to disturb you um you know not not a few there there's several things there's there's several things that you're going to see in this movie that are going to disturb you um they're not going to be played lightly they're going to be played exactly as serious as they are um yeah this is this is a serious fucking film um i was very uncomfortable in certain parts uh i was very angry throughout this film um most of the middle to the end i was very sad and emotional i um there's a couple parts where i was really happy found it really funny just but film took me through the gambit um it's an emotional roller coaster this film it will make you feel every emotion um and when you're watching this film you forget that these are actors like i was watching this film i did not see nick cage i did not see ty sheridan i saw gary and joe and i had to remind myself while watching the movie oh oh yeah yeah pay attention to the performances and it so good um talking about performances i want to talk about the actual dad uh gary's dad um played by gary poulter now this entire film i was floored by this guy's performance um just mind blown by this guy he is just the attention to detail with his performance the little things he did with his voice and his mannerisms like spot on spot on um he's a fucking bastard too you hate you hate him in this movie um but come to find out he ain't a fucking actor he was some homeless guy that they found in the area while they were shooting and um the director has a tendency to work with locals that aren't actors and everything and cast them in his movies and that's what happened here and literally magic happened um this is one of the best performances I've ever seen. And, uh, unfortunately, um, after they finished filming, about two months later, he was found dead on the street, uh, face down in, like, a little puddle. Um, really sad, but, um, yeah, he, he was acting, but that was his life. He, that's who he was. Uh, it wasn't that much of a stretch. Yes, he was acting. The things that were being done in the film, he was not actually doing. And I don't want to say that he would be willing to do those things. I don't know this person. I can't say. But 
most of this performance, from what I've been able to understand, was Gary. It was Gary Poulter. Uh, it was not them coaching him, not them working with him. It was Gary just being himself. And only in parts did he actually have to act. Um, but f fucking incredible. Um, like, just absolutely incredible film. Um, but yeah, just, I, I do want to stress, this is not light viewing. Do not go into this like I did, expecting a comedy. Um, you may not have a bad time. I definitely did not have a bad time. But... I know there are many people that would have a bad time. Um, it's ironic that this happened with this film, and and for me also Snow Angels, because Snow Angels... I'll, 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 I will definitely be talking about Snow Angels, so I'll tell you the full story there, but a very similar situation happened. Um, the description on the box for Snow Angels did not properly prepare me for the beast of a movie that that was. Um, it made me think, oh, this is some rom-com starring Sam Rockwell. Awesome, I'll, I'll check this out. Holy fuck, this makes Requiem for a Dream look uh, lighthearted. Like, yeah, uh, and Joe's another one. It's nowhere near as dark and depressing, but uh, it's definitely much more hopeful. And as angry as I was, I love the characters, Joe and Gary. They are, they are such good characters. And... Uh, so there was, I was, I was happy with the characters throughout. I was very upset and very angered by some of the other characters that I was meant to be angered by. Um, so every, everybody did their fucking part right in this. Like, everybody did their part right. Um, but yeah, I was, I was looking into this. Apparently this film had like a little over $4 million budget. And I would imagine that accounts for marketing costs as well. Um, massively underperformed. It only did two million in the box office, so it was a big flop. But uh, it, I I know Nick Cage. He and while watching it, I and this was something while I was forgetting that this is Nick Cage. This is not Joe I'm seeing here. This is actually Nick Cage acting as Joe. I constantly kept forgetting that because of how good this performance was. It felt so raw and just real. Um, the emotions that I was seeing on the screen did not feel like somebody acting. It felt like somebody actually going through those emotions. And uh, apparently the bit of both. Um, Nick Cage really identified with the character Joe, uh, which is why he took the role. Uh, he turned down... Um, Turned down two movies, including Killing Season, that he knew were going to be very profitable. Uh, not necessarily in terms of box office, but for his pocket, were going to help him. And he was not doing that good financially at the time. Turned those down so that he could do Joe. Because uh, he fully believed in this character, he fully believed in this performance and the director, and he wanted to make this movie. And uh, he he's stated that he sees a bit of himself in Joe, and that while he, he did Joe, he wasn't acting. Um, this is the truest, closest performance to who he is, and you really feel that. Um, it, it, it feels like he feels naked in the role. Like, it doesn't, you really get a sense of who Nick Cage is in this role. Um, and it comes through, you can see so much. Um, but that's that's one of the beauties of this movie. They don't fucking come out and tell you anything. It's all just, it's all told through the body language, or you, you, you pick up things from like, oh, this character mentioned this, and then he does this later on, somebody else is talking about this over here, and then you get this little bit here, and you kind of piece it all together. But nobody, there's no exposition throughout this movie. There's, it's, it's all just very natural. And if you're not paying attention, you ain't gonna know. Um, but you don't need to know. Like, so many films these days focus on like, oh, well, we gotta cover this, and then we gotta cover this, and we gotta cover this, and we gotta cover this. You don't need that. I don't need to know who this character is. I just need you to make the character interesting and make me want to know about him. 
and the actor like you as a writer and the actor you better fucking know that character you better know more about that character than i do and than i ever will know so that way you can flesh that character out and this this is, did exactly that um truly fantastic film um but yeah for, for me this is this is a 10 out of 10 I, I i absolutely love this film and uh had i watched this on a different day knowing what i was going to walk into i'd probably be an eight or a nine but expecting just some crude comedy and getting this <sighs> could not be happier could not be happier so um yeah but that's gonna wrap this up for me um I think I rambled a bit here, but really, really like this film. Um, if you've seen this film, what what did you think of this film? Like, did were you as impressed with it as I was? Was this boring to you? Um, I can see this being not for a lot of people. Like, this is not a this is not a Marvel movie. There's no action in this film. There's violence, but there's no action. Um, and it's it's definitely a film not made for today's audiences, which is probably why i liked it so much but um yeah really really curious to see what others thought about this movie um yeah let me know down in the comments um give this video a like and uh see you next time stay safe all